Wow, I don't know about you folks, but I'm just barely catching my breath from last week's game, Skyview and Bear River. What a ball game that was. And tonight we get the longest running rivalry in Cache Valley, the Logan Grizzlies and the Skyview Bobcats. Everybody looks at this one and thinks, well, man, this one won't even be close because Skyview's scoring all these points and Logan is really struggling in region play. They've got a new coach, a new system, inexperienced players and players that have been hurt. So they've really, really struggled in Region 11 play. It looks like maybe a blowout on tap, right? Well, that's what everybody thought last year when Logan visited Skyview. And Logan beat Skyview out there in Smithfield. Can lightning strike twice? Well, I don't know. We're about to see on the game of the week. Skyview and Logan coming up. Wendy's is saying thanks for making the Junior Bacon Cheeseburger America's number one bacon cheeseburger by giving you more of what you love. Introducing Wendy's Giant Junior Bacon Cheeseburger. Double the beef, double the bacon, and now it comes in a giant meal for $5 with nuggets, fries, and a drink. There's absolutely nothing junior about it except the price. Get Wendy's $5 Giant Junior Bacon Cheeseburger meal before it's gone. Bring back what you've been missing. Bring back Cash Valley hearing and audiology. Bring back what you've been missing. Bring back Cash Valley hearing and audiology. I had a chance to talk with Coach Munn of the Logan Grizzlies before the game tonight and talk to him about how after not a bad start to this season, things have really kind of gone off the rails in region play for the Grizzlies. And he talked about, well, it's not really one thing. It's a lot of growing pains, culture changes, and game experience is huge. Not a lot of players with a lot of game time experience. And then he mentioned injuries. He said, yeah, the injury bug has really bitten us. There's going to be at least five starters out of tonight's ball game and a couple other guys on a little bit of a limited pitch count for the Grizzlies, but they're, hap they're happy to have a couple of those guys back, one of those guys being Reed Olson, who's the leading sacker on this defense. He's got five on the season. The whole team only has six. He's been out the last two games. He's in tonight, but he will be limited. It'll be a big task for the Grizzlies to shut down the Bobcats, but they're going to try to catch the magic that they had in the bottle last year and get the W over the Bobcats. Say the word base. Say the word mess. The game of the week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by Wendy's of Cash Valley. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology. Bring back what you have been missing. Aspen Dental. Get that gorgeous smile you've always wanted. Custom Fence Company. Privacy, security, peace of mind. Anderson Seed and Garden. Growing better gardeners. The Logo Shop. We logo stuff. All kinds of stuff. 
KSM means music. Music is all we do. Factory Pizzeria. We're open late after the game. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's TV station for over 30 years. It's homecoming in Logan High as the Grizzlies host the Skyview Bobcats in the oldest running rivalry in Cash Valley on the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. Good evening, everyone. I'm Eric Holton along with you, as always, on a Friday football night in Cash Valley. We saw Skyview in action last week, and man, was that a ball game. Skyview hanging on to win that ball game, a missed two-point conversion by Bear River, just like the week before when they played Ridgeline, and they're able to hang on and win 35-34. Playing against the Logan team, that has a new coaching staff, a new system, a new philosophy, a bunch of players that are short on experience, didn't get a lot of experience last year. And the injury bug is a bit, but they're still hoping to rise up and pull the upset tonight. As Cooper Red, one of the best players on the slogan team, takes that kickoff and returns it up to about the 26 yard line. And that's where Logan will start two and four on the season. Oh, and two. In recent play, they were two and two in the, in the non-region season. But region has been a nightmare for them. They lost last week 61 to seven to Mountain Crest. They're giving up 55 and a half points per game in region play. Again, a lot of that as they're just trying to reinstill some new things here, and they've lost a lot of key players. To injury. Some of those are starting to come back though tonight. We'll talk about it as the game goes on. First give right up the middle for a couple of yards to Avila. He's their leading rusher. He picks up two. And he's averaging just over two yards a carry on the season. Coach Munn telling me, yeah, we want to possess the ball. We want to shorten the game. We want to keep the ball out of Skyview's hands as much as possible as Keaton Pawn is flushed out of the pocket. He's got running room to this near side. Turns the corner, pushed out of bounds. Flag comes in. It's just as he's stepping out of bounds, he gets shoved in the back. And they're gonna add 15, and the ball will be up near midfield. It was a six yard run. Personal foul. We've seen that this season. We've seen the way the officiating has been handled this season, that they are quick on the trigger. I've seen multiple officiating crews quick on that trigger for anything that might be after a play, extracurricular, or put player safety at risk. Avila on the RPO, and he is smothered. Right at the line of scrimmage. In fact, he may have lost a yard. Skyview, one of their problems last week was penalties, and it doesn't take them long to get a penalty. Here in this early going, and it's a, it was a 15 yarder. Second and 11, ball at the 48 yard line. Pawn setting up the screen to Red. He's got running room. Down the middle, now he cuts it outside. Red's down inside the 35 to the 32 yard line. 20 yards and a first down. Red's averaging 17 yards per catch as the leading receiver on this Logan team. 434 yards receiving coming in through six games. First and 10 in the Skyview side of the field. And this one dropped. The quick little hit out there. And 
nobody home. Well, they were home. They just didn't answer the door. It was, it was angry. Second and 10. Avila sneaks through. Now they're taking a shot. Going up top to the corner. No flag as the defensive back was there. And Argyle comes down. A little wonky on that leg and he's slow to get up. Jalen Argyle plays basketball. He's the coach's son, the basketball coach's son. And he's gonna get up and walk off under his own power. In fact, he jogs off. They tested Ballard over on that far side, and Ballard passed. Coach Munn telling me that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to possess the ball. They wanted long drives. They wanted to keep Skyview off the field. And then they wanted to take some shots when they presented themselves. The shot was there. Pond put it right on the money. But Argyle couldn't come up with it. Go into the big guys. He's tall as Argyle. And he just couldn't come down with it. Third and 10. Pond's got a lot of running room, but he's a little bit late trying to take off out of the pocket. And down he goes. It's Bradley with the sack and a loss of four. So good looking drive, bogging down. It's fourth down, it's too far for a field goal. They're short alignment. And he hustles on out as Pond stays out there with Avila behind him. See if he throws it or kicks it. He's going to throw it. They're going to go for it. Bale's out of trouble, not for long. Down he goes. He had some pretty good time for a minute, and then it broke down. And Smith takes him down for a loss, a big loss. Clear back to the 46-yard line, a loss of 10. Protection problems have been an issue for Logan up front. Keeping Pond clean, and that time they gave up back-to-back -back sacks. Pond looked like he had running room on both of them. He's just a little bit slow to get out of that pocket. Thatcher fires it to Williams, and Williams hauls it in for a gain of five. Williams, the leading receiver on this team, 44 catches, 609 yards, seven touchdowns, 14 yards per catch for Williams. He came up with some big ones last week against Bear River. Logan moves, but then they get back. Egbert in the backfield, he had over 200 yards rushing last week. He's 4A's leading yards and touchdowns rusher. And they're going to turn and hand it to him. He's got a guard in front of him. He gets taken down around the ankles by Red right at the sticks. A gain of five. Greg. And if Red doesn't get down around his ankles, Egbert's ringing the bell. Williams, the receiver to this near side. Thatcher's going to turn and hand to Eckert again. Bounces it outside. Look out. Great block downfield by his receiver, Ballard. And it springs him for 44 yards and a touchdown. Great block by Ballard to spring him the rest of the way. He kind of started off tackle, then bounced it outside, and then he got the blocking down downfield to put him into Pater. They only needed a couple of plays. The Sky puts it in the end zone with 8.14 to play in the first period. It's Sky 7. Logan, nothing. You're watching the game of the week on the Valley Sound. Wendy's at Logan is.
thanks to the sponsor of the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. They've got breakfast, lunch, and dinner at Wendy's from fresh cracked eggs to fresh, never frozen beef. Boy, they've got you down at Wendy's. You know, they've got the square hamburgers that have always been a trademark. They bring the freshness. Chicken sandwiches, they change the game. And you know, we all love their nuggets, that's for sure. Fresh made salads, hot crispy fries, even old school chili and baked potatoes. Wendy's at Logan, Game of the Week sponsor. Well, Brevin Egbert had over 200 yards rushing last week. On two carries, he's got 49 yards and a touchdown. He had three touchdowns last week. Short kick taken on the run. Return right up the middle to about the 34-yard line. That was Avila. He was met rather rudely out there at about the 33, 34-yard line before he was sat down. And they're gonna put it at the 34 yard line. Logan now trailing seven nothing to Skyview. It's homecoming here at Logan. That means you've probably seen the big L painted on Main Street. And the L will be lit up at halftime on the side of the mountain, I'm sure. Red was the quarterback, and Logan left early. I got to look on the sideline for number three and see if he's hurt or if they're just trying a new look with Red back there. See if Pawn, because Pawn got taken down. Now Red's out to the side, and Pawn is in there. So they were just giving it a little bit of a new look. Pawn as they set up the screen. Avila makes the first man miss. Moves upfield, picks the penalty yardage back up, and he's back to the original line of scrimmage. A gain of five on the screen. So you can see early that Logan's trying to use the aggressive Skyview defense, that aggressive nature of them against them. Skyview's showing a five-man front. And they're all coming. Pawn slips out. Downfield, he's got a man. It's red on the run. Ring the bell, he's in the house. <laughs> 66 yards as Keaton Pawn got out of the pocket. And he finds Cooper Red for the touchdown. Lopez has his PAT blocked. So it's 7-6. Skyview leads Logan. And an exciting early first half burst. You're watching the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. Hey, do you ever go to one of those family get-togethers and you're sitting around, everybody's kind of laughing and having a good time, and you realize, I'm not sure what everybody's laughing about. I I didn't catch what they were saying. And you, and you get a little bit worried, right, about, about your hearing. Well, you should probably go see Dr. Paul Danes at Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology. He's one of only eight board-certified audiologists in the entire state of Utah. He's got certifications from the American Academy of Audiology, American Speech Language Hearing Association, the member of the Utah Speech Language Hearing Association. He's got more letters than the alphabet, but what matters is that he knows how to take care of you and help you get back to living your best life, hearing what you need to hear, enjoying everyone around you. Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology, a Game of the Week sponsor. Another 66-yard touchdown. Makes this one interesting. Skyview blocked the PAT attempt. 
So it's seven six, Skyview stays on top. And a few big plays on either side of the ball here early. Logan shocked Skyview last year in a game that everybody thought coming into that, a Logan has no business winning this game. They have no business being in this game. And then they went into Skyview's homecoming and beat Skyview on their home field 20 to 16. So when the uh, rivalry games get going, you kind of throw, you kind of throw some of the uh, conventional wisdom out the window. The kick goes out of bounds. We got a personal foul on Logan and the kick going out of bounds on Logan. So that's gonna set Skyview up clear up at midfield, I believe. And that's just not what you need if you're Logan. So a couple of penalties. And there's another one. As the Grizzlies offsides. That's four penalties. And we haven't even played five minutes of this first quarter. 7.28 to play in the first quarter. 7-6 Skyview. Three wide receivers to the far side for the Bobcats. Zamel Williams. And I think Favero out there. Favero had a heck of a ball game last week against Bear River, defensively especially. Turn and give to Egbert. Egbert right up the middle, spins off one tackle. The tackler got down around his ankles and kept him from going any further. He picks up three on first and five. Egbert's seen a lot of usage, 159. Well, now 162 carries in six games, six games in less than a quarter. Eleven hundred and fifty two yards. Now he's now he's over twelve hundred. Thatcher goes up top, has Williams. Williams turns it back inside. Grabbed and thrown down at the twenty four. Eighteen yards and a first down. So the Bobcats in business again, deep in Sky or in Logan territory, 625 to play in the first quarter. Skyview leading 7-6. Turn and hand it to Egbert. Egbert back to the middle. Puts his head down, pushes forward. He's still not down. He's clear down to the 11-yard line, a 12-yard run on first and 10 for Brevin Egbert. Four carries, 64 yards for Egbert. And a timeout call by Logan. Logan wants to get a timeout and talk about this a little bit. If you look at both of these offenses, Skyview averaging 39.6 points per game. That's number two in 4A. Timpanogos is the number one scoring team in 4A. Defensively, though, Skyview not quite as dominant as they have been some other years on the defensive side of the ball. 24.3 points per game. And in Region 11, well, they're scoring 29 points a game and giving up 28. We talked about that thin margin. Logan's giving up eight, or scoring 18 points a game on the season, giving up 34, but in region play, they're only scoring six and a half, and giving up 55 and a half. It has not been a great region start for the Grizzlies, and it just doesn't let up this year as Brevin Egbert gets all the way down to the one yard line, first and goal, Skyview. And Dr. Brevin Egbert, back down by Cooper Hill. Region 11 is tough, top to bottom. Give it to Egbert again and let him finish the job, and he does. Touchdown, Revan Egbert now, two touchdowns. 75 yards on six carries. And not the start defensively the Grizzlies were looking for. 
And a PAT attempt coming up. Logan was offsides. So they're gonna, they blew the whistle before the kick. So I'm not sure what they're gonna, they're gonna make the team stay out there and run it again, they're gonna do it on the kickoff. Yeah, they're gonna take the penalty and had to put it down about like the yard and a half line. Cause they started blowing the whistle before the kick. Skyview's going to have to run the play again. They brought the game ball in by the Life Flight helicopter. We've had hail. We had lightning as we were setting up before the game. Great and hard, and now a beautiful sunset behind us, and the clouds a little bit pink showing up on the mountains. I see looks like down toward uh, the mountains up North Logan with a dusting of snow on them. Doesn't get any better on a Friday night. Now they're gonna run the fake. Pop it to the kicker, let him score. Two points for the Bobcats on a little trickeration. So with 5.54 to play in the first quarter, it's Skyview, 15, Logan, six. sitting around and it's getting a little bit late in the evening and you know you wonder what is open right now I want to go get something to eat and maybe I don't want a burger I want something else pizza sounds really good well the factory pizzeria they're open late you can order online and go in and pick it up but if you order online at the factory pizzeria the factorypizzeria.com you get five percent off your order at the factorypizzeria.com and don't forget about their Monday special Buy any large pizza, get a second pizza half off. That's for dine-in and pickup at the Factory Pizzeria, a game of the week sponsor. Well, Skyview running through Logan like a hot knife through butter here in the early going. This one will go out of bounds. Oh, they save it in bounds. Let it go out of bounds, Cooper Red says. He turns around to his teammate and says, hey, just let it go out of bounds. That was McAllister over there that was going to try to save it in. Again, we talked about the inexperience, right? Game reps are a big deal. They're a big deal for, for players. Last year, they didn't, from what I understand, they I think they had a freshman and a varsity. They didn't have like a JV team, and they couldn't field a JV team. So you're getting a lot of kids. At, these are their first reps, and it is an unforgiving region. They did okay in the they did okay in the non-region season two and two. Skyview looking like they might come off the edge with a linebacker, and they do. Pond stays, keeps it alive, gets out near the 40-yard line. Pick up a five. Four carries minus three yards for Pond. He has thrown a touchdown pass. 91 yards on three completions. Pond fires behind his intended receiver. As soon as he threw it, he put his hands on his hips. He could feel, he could feel that that just wasn't it. Third down now coming up for Logan. Third and five. Five men rushing. Pond gets away from one, gets away from two. Firing back the other way. He's got a receiver as Red comes back for him. 
Wow. Sixteen yards on third and five. Red having himself a pretty good first quarter. Pond in trouble again, gets away again. He's downfield, sliding down. An 11 yard gain. Those defensive linemen for Skyview are gonna be waking up in a cold sweat about him tonight. My goodness, first and 10. Logan on the move, hand it to Avila. Avila puts his head down, slides forward for a couple. Clock runs with 4.15 to play in the first quarter, a long first quarter if there have been three touchdowns. There's Logan passing the ball quite a few times. Three-man rush, Pond gets out of it again. Slides down after a pickup of eight. Let's call it seven, and Coach Howell says timeout. He wants to talk to his defense. And you know, there's, a such, there's such a thing as lane integrity when you're rushing. You can't just run up field and, you know, run in, out, pell-mell here, there, and everywhere with your hair on fire looking for the quarterback. A lot of times, especially if they're just doing a straight up rush without any games, like stunts and twists, you've got a lane, a rush lane, and they want, I guess a quarterback like that, you kind of got to stay in your rush lane. Because if you get out of them, you got big gaps for him to escape. And that's what's been happening with Pond. He's been escaping. He's got 15 yards on six carries, but on the last possession, he kept himself alive when it looked like they had him dead to rights, and he throws a 66-yard touchdown pass. So now it's third and a yard. A long yard. Red on the direct snap. Fakes the pitch, puts his head down, looks like he's got enough for a first down. Picked up three. So the Grizzlies pick up the first down, their drive stays alive, they trail 15 to six. They missed a PAT. Skyview went for two after a penalty on one of their PATs. That's why the interesting sounding score flag and Lazari's like, oh, I got all sorts of room. Oh, it's because everybody stopped. And they're turning around, pointing at Red, saying that he left early. So Logan with their fifth penalty of the quarter. 324 to play in a long first quarter. And Logan on the move again. This is Logan's third possession. They turned it over on downs in their first, after their first possession. And they moved into the Skyview territory on that possession, so they've been able to move the ball. Here comes that rush. Now Pond's in trouble, and they get a hold of him, and he had nowhere to go because everybody stayed in their lanes. Nine-yard loss for Pond. So second down and many. They got to get down to the 12-yard line. They're back at the 26. Check that, the 36. Second and about 25. Here comes some late pressures. A linebacker's coming. Pawn pops it forward to Avila. Avila catches it, takes off. Picks up the penalty yardage and the sack yardage back. 14 yards. Yeah. 
He now has a couple of catches for 19 yards. Oh, it's coming back on a hold. Didn't see the flag out there. So the Grizzlies back up even further. Again, they've got to get down to the 12-yard line. They're at the 46. So it's second and 38. Here comes everybody. Pawn's in trouble again. It's going to be second, third, and even more as he goes down at midfield. Third and about 43. And a loss of four for Pawn. Skyview now with four sacks on the night. We're still in the first quarter. It's been a wild first quarter. Watching it, you'd think, oh man, Skyview's killing Logan. Well, it's 15 to six. Skyview scored on both of their possessions. Logan scored on one of two. They had first down at the 22, but now they're going backwards, trying to get the screen set up. Red gets out of one tackle attempt. Can't get out of the second and third. And he picks up seven. And that's gonna be about 35 yards short of where he needs to be. 108 to play in the first quarter. Let's see if Logan punts. Yeah, they're gonna punt it. That's fourth and just way too many. A little bit of a high snap. Punter gets it down. The back judge threw a flag. You can see the flag there on the field, I believe. It's back there on about the nine yard line. He threw it while the punt was in the air. I wonder if Skyview had too many players on the field. They ran somebody off late. That punt hit one of the Grizzly defenders on the top of the head. Yeah, Skyview had too many men on the field. So they're gonna mark it off and then make them have them kick it again? Let's see. That's a big one. Yeah, that's a big one. They gave him 15 on that one. Okay. That's not the, well, Logan's brought their offense back out on the field now. And now Coach Munn's gonna call his second time out of this first half. It's 15 to six. Skyview leads Logan. Logan has fourth down and 15 in front of him at the Skyview 28 yard line. Rich Lion played Mountain Crest last night. That one ended up being a 34 to 28 ball game. Rich Lion beating Mountain Crest. Mountain Crest scored late and then kicked the onside kick. Erie only had about eight seconds left when they did that, and they, Ridgeline got on it. But that one had, had a little bit of suspense to it. And Bear River and Green Canyon going at, at it tonight. Green Canyon, one of the best defenses in 4A, despite giving up more points in region play, they're still one of the best defenses in 4A, and the best scoring defense, anyway, in Region 11. All right, that offense stays out. Pond's got extra blockers in the backfield with him. Over the middle to Red, it's grabbed instead by somebody else, and it's a first and goal. Wow. Lazari catches it for 23 yards. My goodness. 
Now they're saying it was Avila that caught it. Whoever caught it, I don't think it was Avila. He was in blocking. And that's the end of the quarter. So we're going to sort this all out. We're going to go to a break. We'll be back after this. Rich's Cars and Credit is one of our Game of the Week sponsors. They've got a goal. That goal is stress-free shopping. It's their mission, really. They provide a huge selection of new and used vehicles, exceptional car care and customer service, and they do it with a smile. They keep great stock in their inventory, right? Sometimes it's been hard to find just what you're looking for. Oh, you'll find it. Down at Rich's Cars and Credit. Competitive pricing. They'll help you with your financing. They're the place to go if you're looking for a, another car. Rich's Cars and Credit. Game of the Week sponsor. All right, it was Pingree. Thanks to the radio guys for helping me out with that one. It wasn't Avila, it was Pingree. And he nabbed it from Red because I think that one was going to Red. And Pingree reached out and grabbed it. Red might have scored. And now the Grizzlies look for the end zone again. And Argyle can't quite get there. So now it's third and goal at the five-yard line. Three receivers to the far side, Argyle alone to this side. Where's a lot of room for a slant if you want to run it on this near side. They're looking across the middle to Red. Pond fires it in there for six. So Red now with two touchdowns on the evening. And Pond just threw his second touchdown. Another problem with the PAT. And so it's 15 to 12. Skyview leading by a field goal in the second quarter here on the game of the week. Yeah, the Logo Shop is a great place to promote your brand. You can boost your brand image, connect and communicate with fans, prospects, and customers and make a lasting impact with items from the Logo Shop. They say they'll logo stuff, all kinds of stuff, and that's true. In fact, I don't know if there's anything they won't logo. I might bring my pet down and see if they'll do the dog. They'll logo bags, drinkware, technology, things like uh, well, power banks, mice, flash drives, speakers, anything for your office. Keep your name front and center every day with pens, notebooks, and sticky notes, mouse pads, anything else your audience uses daily. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. A Game of the Week sponsor. Well, fireworks on the field and fireworks in the sky here at Logan High School. Logan is a couple of missed PAT attempts, blocked PAT attempts to be more precise away from being in a tie ball game. As it is, they find themselves down by three, 15 to 12. Just a little pooch kick, look out. Return by Skyview up to the 40 yard line. And that's where the Bobcats will start, leading by three. Man, there's been a little bit of everything in the, early in this ball game. There's 11.43 to play. We've only played 17 seconds of this second quarter. And it's 15 to 12. And I already feel like we played a whole ball game. It's been crazy. 
Thatcher with an empty backfield. Egbert now motions into the backfield and back out. He looks to the sideline. Three seconds on the play clock and they snap it away. Thatcher, down the middle, down goes the receiver, out come with flags. Bright and Williams got tangled up with the defender and that's gonna be another penalty on Logan. And speaking of penalties, it was a huge penalty against Skyview on the punt. It ended up leading to that score. You remember it was fourth and forever. Skyview got called for a penalty. I thought it was just like the five yard variety. They, they tacked on 15 yards and then Logan went for it on fourth and 13. Logan's offsides again. My goodness. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven penalties in his first half. Logan keeps shooting themselves in the foot penalty wise. First and five. Turn and hand it to Egbert. Egbert into the secondary. Egbert off to the races. Nobody there but the pylon. 40 yards and a touchdown for Brevin Egbert. A hundred and fifteen yards on seven carries. And three touchdowns for Egbert. A few boo birds coming out here. I think you could boo the fact that Logan's made too many mistakes penalty wise, just silly mistakes that way. But they're in the ball game early. No good on that PAT. 21-12, Logan leads Skyview on the game of the week. You know, I'm, uh, I'm an old dude as I get to keep reminded how old I am all the time. But very few of us remember the days when bread was made naturally. Wheat was ground into fresh flour. The recipes were, they were simple. They only had the necessary ingredients. And you know where they do that still? At the old grist mill. They brought back the natural art of making bread. They have, it's simple, it's moist, it's wholesome. They make bread the way it was meant to be made. They've got select high protein wheat. They mill it daily in their bakery. That's why their bread's so rich and fresh in flavor. They use only freshest and finest ingredients. Stop by, get a hot slice of bread at the Old Grist Mill and pick up a loaf or two of your own. The Old Grist Mill, a Game of the Week sponsor. Man, with all this scoring going on, we're gonna run out of, we're gonna run out of sponsors, Earl. Go get me some more. 11.26 to play in the first half. Skyview started that drive with like 11.43. So it took him 17 seconds to find the end zone. Ball fielded right around the five yard line, returned out to near the 25 and a flag comes in. Avila, they're gonna spot it right at the 25. Let's see what the flag is. Let's see if they're gonna tack on some more or if they're gonna back them up. Personal foul, face mask on Skyview. 45 yards on three penalties for Skyview. 55 yards on seven penalties for Logan. Well, it's been a anything you can do, I can do better show here with these two offenses the last couple of possessions. Skyview scored on every possession. Logan has scored on two of three. Let's see what the Logan offense can do this time. Pawn quickly to Argyle. 
see where they give him. Well, they didn't give him much. They only gave him a couple. Thought he had a little bit more than that. But they're a lot closer than I am. Second and eight. He caught it and then he got pushed backwards. He may have gone backwards on his own. If you go backwards on your own and try to loop around, they're going to bring it back too. Avila, right up the middle. Bunch of Bobcats on top of it. The Bobcats travel in bunches, herds. A murder of Bobcats. Four yards on four carries for Avila. Third down and seven. Three of six on third downs, one of two on fourth downs for Logan. Here comes some pressure. Pond goes down. They get down into his ankles so he can't use his feet. And it's a big loss. Ten yard loss for Pond. And for Skyview, that's their fifth sack of the half. Coach Munn talked to me about that when we were talking earlier. He was talking about some of the problems protecting the pond that they've been having, and they were trying to get those shored up because you can see what pond can do when he has a little bit of time. Ball caught at about the 40 and then advanced out to the 43. That's where Skyview will take over, leading 21-12 with 9.33 to play in the first half. Take a look at the Green Canyon Bear River score as we get a little bit closer to halftime. See how that game's going. That one should be interesting. Bear River, we saw last week, they could score points. Green Canyon, they're good at preventing people from scoring points. Turn, give it to Egbert. Oh, no! <laughs> Egbert. Looked like he was going to go. <laughs> 29 yards in the first down. That oh no was the defense's reaction. The defensive coordinator's reaction. Plenty of time for Thatcher over the middle touchdown. A 30 yard touchdown strike to Zamo. And Skyview making it look easy. Thatcher with plenty of time. And he just stood in there and waited for his man to come open. Oh, another flag. Another offside penalty on Logan. So Skyview's going to go for two. Leading 27-12, Skyview lines up to go for two. Egbert, ball comes out. Oh, the ball was on the ground. Did one of the Bobcats get on it? Now the officials are going to talk about it because the far side official said touchdown. The near side said something different. They talk about it, not touchdown, but good, good PAT. That's what we call it. 9.02 to play in the first half. Skyview extends the lead to 29-12. General dentistry, cosmetic dentistry, dental implants, or orthodontics for yourself or someone in your family. Well, Aspen Dental in Cache Valley, they do all of that. They want you to be comfortable. 
They want to make your experience at the dentist the best it can be, right? Nobody likes to go to the dentist, but Aspen Dental is going to work really hard to make it a better experience for you. If you're looking for a dentist that Logan trusts, call Aspen Dental. The patients keep on coming back because of their great relationship and the great work they do. Aspen Dental, a Game of the Week sponsor. Avila takes this one around the 10 yard line. Tripped up and falls forward to the 26. And that's where Logan takes over. Trailing now 29-12. So Logan had a pretty good drive going on their first possession of the game. Ended up getting into Skyview territory and then turning it over on downs. Skyview scored, Logan got it back, answered the score. Skyview got it back, scored again. Logan got it back, answered the score. And now Logan couldn't answer last time and Skyview has scored again. Every possession the Bobcats have scored. Here comes a screen and it's picked off. Skyview taking it back to the house. Touchdown. Pawn had somebody right in his face. And he just kind of put that one out there and it hung up. And it's picked off. And now the avalanche has started. Vickers. Returns it. About 28 yards for the touchdown. This time Skyview's lined up for a regular PAT. Kicks up, kicks good. 36-12, Skyview on top. Hey, have you ever wanted to play a musical instrument? Well, there's a, t there's a shop right here in town that can help you with that. They can help you with anything musical that you want. It's KSM Music. They offer lessons for a wide range of instruments, including guitar, bass, drums, piano, ukulele, and more. They have band and orchestra rentals if you have kids that are in band or orchestra. They service and repair uh, all sorts of instruments, and they have pro audio rentals and they deal in all the top brands. KSM Music, a Game of the Week sponsor. Well, Logan kept up for a minute. About a quarter and not even a half. And now things have started rolling for Skyview. And they lead 36 to 12 after the pick six by the Skyview defense. Kickoff is muffed, but then returned out to about the 22-yard line. And Logan's offense will come back on the field. I, you know, I've been watching, I've been watching Pond, Keaton Pond out there. Number three. And every time Skyview scored, he's, you know, he's trying to be a leader. He's out there, he's clapping his hands, and he's greeting his defense as they come over because, you know, it's so easy to get your head down. Things have been really not going the Grizzlies way here the first three weeks of region play after a promising start to the season and now you're up against the second leading offense in 4A turn and give to Avila oh he's bent over backwards sometimes you see legs Get bent like that, lead to injuries, and he pops right back up. Happy about that. If you, if you watch the NFL, you saw Nick Chubb's leg not go the right way in that game the other night. Fake the game to Avila. Pond's got time. Now it runs out, turns the corner, steps out of bounds after a gain of a yard. Third down. 
Gundy. Logan is three of seven on third downs. With 8.04 to play in the first half, Skyview leads 36 to 12. Red, your lone receiver to the far side. Argyle and Pendry to this near side. Extra rushers coming. Pawn across the middle. Complete. First down. Pendry comes up with it. 14 yards on third down. That was a strike and a great catch by Pendry. Two catches, 37 yards by Pingree. And we got an injured Logan player. It's one of their linemen. He does not want help coming off the field. He's got a little bit of a hitch in his giddy up. And they were trying to help him off the field and he swatted everybody's hands away. And he does not want help and he's struggling to get off. Now he's gonna take some help. down on the ground on this sideline. They're going to take a look at his leg. And it's first and 10. One back in the backfield. Pingree pops it up in the air and it's intercepted. Is that Vickers? It is Vickers. And he's got another pick. Vickers with four interceptions on the season. That's 11 for Skyview as a team. Back-to-back -back interceptions thrown by Keaton Pond. He's got 158 yards on 11 completions against eight, against eight attempts. There are eight completions against 11 attempts, but now he's thrown back-to-back -back picks. And Skyview looking to go big. Here they go. Williams near the end zone. Pass interference. He ran right past the defensive back. I think that might have been Red. And then Red was trying to catch up, and then Williams had to slow down for the ball, and Red bumped into him. So another penalty on Logan. But for a while, this was a... Real competitive ball game, but it's been all Skyview for the past well, about five minutes. They lead 36 to 12. Turn and hand it to Egbert. Egbert's got a convoy. Egbert cuts back. He won't go down. Egbert in the weight room, now in the end zone. Touchdown. Twenty-eight yards. A hundred and seventy-three yards. Nine carries. Four touchdowns for Egbert. And we're probably gonna have a running clock in the second half. PAT attempt is up, and it's good, 43 to 12. Skyview extends their lead. You know, Custom Fence has their origins in 1960, yeah, clear back in 1960. And today they serve Southern Idaho, the Wasatch Front, as well as expanding their operations out into Arizona, California, New Mexico, South Dakota, Colorado, Montana, Wyoming, Nevada, Washington, Idaho, and Oregon. They have job capabilities that range from the smallest residential fence to airport and prison security fences. If you're looking for some help, Thinking about next spring, I got this fence 
that I want to put in. Or maybe you want to put one in now this fall before it starts getting real cold. Custom Fence is really the only phone call to make. Custom Fence, a Game of the Week sponsor. Kick fielded at the seven yard line. Returned out to the 21, 22, and that's where Logan will take over. Now trailing 43 to 12. Well, we mentioned it earlier that Logan's been giving up 55 and a half points per game in region play. Skyview's sitting on 43 right now. Back-to-back -back turnovers by Logan's offense. One, an interception, return for a touchdown. Another that led to a touchdown on two plays later. Here's Avila. He picks up five on his best run of the night. Six carries, 11 yards for Avila. The Skyview defense has registered six sacks against Keaton Pond. Pond has put the ball in the air 11 times. He's gonna have to put it up a lot more, trailing like they are now. I say 11, I meant 12. Turn and hand it off again. Again, Coach Munn telling me before the game, hey, you know, we want to try to possess the ball, slow this thing down. But you can see as Skyview, as their offense is just showing no signs of being able to be slowed down, that that possessed the ball went right out the window, and Logan's had to put the ball in the air to try to keep up. They've hit on some big plays, 158 yards for Pond and a couple of touchdowns, but he's thrown two interceptions. Late pressure, throws this one near the sticks. It's a first down and more for Pingree. Out to the 40 yard line, a gain of 12. They're onto something, this little Pingree kid. Five forty-five to play in the first half. Throw it out to Pingree to this near side. Turns the corner. Yank down. Flags coming in. So Pingree's going to pick up six, seven, and then they're going to add something. We got two different flags. I think we're going to have a flag on each team, and we're going to play this one over again because the back judge threw one out toward the middle of the field and then there was one on the sideline. Pingree kind of got grabbed up by the helmet. Holding on Logan. After the play. Oh, now wait a minute. That's the only one they, that's the only one, maybe both flags were the same penalty. Huh. First and five, it happened, it happened downfield on the pass play. Logan's gonna take their last time out of the half. Logan just, they, penalty wise, they're just killing themselves. talking to Coach Bond earlier. He was talking about uh, guys that haven't played much lately, guys that have really played well. One of the guys when I've said, you know, and I've asked who stood out, he said Cooper Red. So he's really played well, even with a little bit of a shoulder issue that's kept him off the field on defense. They were hoping to use him on defense today. They have used him on defense tonight. Nava, Brown, Eli Perez, Reed Olson, and Peters all have been out at various times and they were hoping to get Olsen maybe back in a limited manner tonight but I haven't seen him much. He's dressed. Pond running backwards. Scooting. Throwing. Pass. 
incomplete. And he was pasted on the sideline. Was pawned. If he kept it, he might have been able to gain two or three yards is all. Instead, he hucked it downfield right at a receiver, but the receiver ran out of room and was out of bounds. Second and 15. And they bring it back clear to this hash. <laughs> Everybody's getting their steps in tonight. A big lineman that hurt his leg for Logan is a, a left tackle. He's back in the game. He's moving gingerly. And he's back in the game. Pawn looking to unload. Look out. Pressure comes from the backside. And down he goes. A loss of two. Sack number six by Skyview in this first half. It's Denny that's the lineman for Logan. That's He went off. Has a little bit of a limp. He's out there now. Been out there this whole drive playing that left tackle. Third and 17. Quickly across the middle, Lazari. He's out near the first down marker. He needed the 50. I think he's going to have it. 17 yards and a first down on third and long. Logan quickly to the line of scrimmage. Skyview wasn't ready. Now Logan snaps it, and they lose a yard. Skyview wasn't ready at all. Logan should have snapped it a little quicker. They, they would have caught Skyview not even on the ball. Second and 11. 340 to play in the first half. 43 to 12, Skyview. At one point, this was a 15 to 12 ball game. Pawn gets out of trouble for a moment. Picks up six. He's been sacked six times. He has 12 carries. So you score those as a run, even though they're on a pass play. So. He's really had six carries where he's actually ran the ball, but he's at minus three yards because of the sacks. Lazari, Pindry, and Argyle on this side. Red alone to the far side. Avila in the backfield. He's going to stay in and help, and they're going for Red. He's behind the defense. Catch made. Thirty-seven yards. Hand it to Avila. Avila runs past the first defender into the end zone for the touchdown. Thirteen yards and a score for Avila. Red has six catches, 151 yards, and two touchdowns. Avila just ran it in there for 13 yards out. Logan will go for two, trailing 43 to 18. Down by 25. Stacked receivers on either side. Avila in the backfield. Pawn. In trouble, down he goes. Another sack. 2.26 to play in the first half. Skyview 43, Logan 18. Who 
Todd is the Game of the Week sponsor. They're just right down the road. I can almost see them from where I'm standing right now. You can create your own unlimited stir fry. Yeah, unlimited. That's a great word when you're talking about stir fry. It's the hottest Asian restaurant in Logan. It's not a Chinese buffet. It's a fresh market of ingredients and unique sauces where you are the chef. Build your own stir fry masterpiece from their huge selection of meat, seafood, noodles, veggies. They've got their Asian-inspired sauces and then watch as their grill warriors cook it to perfection. The whole way you are in control from raw ingredients to a hot meal right in your hands. Who hot? A Game of the Week sponsor. Well, it's been a wild first half here in Logan. Skyview still with a comfortable lead. 43 to 18, they lead by uh, a lot, 25. But Logan keeps punching, and they punch that one in the end zone. Unsuccessful on their PAT, their two point PAT attempt. So they've been unsuccessful on all their PATs. It's homecoming here for the Grizz. They'll have all of the homecoming uh, festivities that they have at the half here. This will be good. That'll give me time to add up all the, all the stats and everything because there's been plenty of them here in this first half. Brevin Egbert's already rushed for 173 yards on only nine carries. So he's about 18 yards per carry, four touchdowns. Thatcher's thrown for a touchdown, a 30-yarder to Zamel. And the Skyview defense has returned an interception for six. Thatcher drops back. Unloads, looking down this near sideline. Good coverage down there by Logan. As Guthrie was trying to create some separation and the defensive back stayed with him and didn't run into him. And it's an incomplete pass. That's only the fourth pass of the night by my stats for Thatcher. Haven't had to throw it when they've been turning around and handing it to Egbert. He's back there now next to his quarterback, and that's who they're going to give it to. Egbert into the secondary again with a blocker. See ya. 69 yards. You know, one thing I've noticed tonight for Skyview, their receivers are blocking the heck out of the, out of the play. They are blocking downfield, and they are the guys that are springing Egbert for these scores. He's getting big yardage, but instead of a big gain, he's springing, they're springing him into scores with great blocking on the outside by the receivers. So it takes Skyview two plays to answer, and now they get out early on the PAT attempt. It's going to back them up. Took them 20 seconds. 20 seconds to score. Pass play and then turn and hand it to Egbert. Five touchdowns. 242 yards rushing, 24 yards per carry for Egbert. PAT's good. Half a hundred on the board for Skyview. 50 to 18. You're watching the game of the week on the Valley Channel. Anderson Seed and Garden is one of our sponsors 
They anchor downtown Logan. They bring the gardeners in from all of the surrounding communities. And not just here in Cache Valley, but from outside the area and the state as well. Established in 1942, Anderson Seed Garden. The family, family owned and operated for three generations. Mark and Ronette running the show down there now. They've been longtime sponsors here on the Valley Channel. We appreciate Anderson Seed Garden, a Game of the Week sponsor. Skyview has scored every time they've touched the football. And they kick off again. Henry looking for an opening. Spins around and gets out to about the 27. And with 1.59 to play in the first half, Logan's offense back out onto the field. Well, I mean, I guess the good news might be that the Logan defense hasn't had a chance to get tired because they're only on the field for two plays before Skyview puts it in the end zone. That's probably not a good thing. It's probably not a plus at all. I mean, they've just had no answer for Brevin Eckler. He's single-handedly taken apart Logan tonight. Egbert, by the time the night's over, he might be at 1,500 yards on the season. He was just under, I don't know, maybe that's saying too much. But Egbert had just under 1,200 coming in. No, okay, maybe about, maybe, but I don't know, he's at 242 right now. <laughs> Keep an eye on that. Pond, scooting around. And now the pressure catches up to him. Another sack as he loses two. Sack number seven. And his pawn ding. No, Skyview's taking a timeout. My goodness. Skyview up 50 to 18. Takes a timeout. They want the ball back. They're going to get the ball to start the second half. I think Skyview remembers that Logan came in there and beat them in their homecoming game last year. And I think they are keen on returning that favor in a big way tonight. Because you're calling timeout now on third and eight with 123 in a game that you lead by 32 points. Hans made some made some uh, plays with his feet running around, but he's taken seven sacks. Unloads, looking for Red, too much on it. Red had a step. Red's been dealing with a shoulder injury, but his feet are just fine. He's shown it a couple of times tonight, it's been, and he showed it again right there because he had a step on the defender. So with a 116 to play in the half, Skyview's offense is going to come back on the field. They lead 50 to 18. Ball fielded on the bounce. By Vickers. And the Bobcats come back out on the field. This is close to where they scored from last time with the run by Egbert. One oh eight to play in the half. Logan with seven in the box. And four defensive backs lined up along the 45. Four-man rush. Thatcher puts it a little high, but it's caught. And they keep the clock running. Thank you, 
Guthrie with his first catch. 45 seconds to play in the half. And everybody goes for Skyview. <laughs> and everybody but the center goes. I think that means the center forgot the snap count. I mean, all the receivers went. I don't know, the whole line didn't go. So maybe it's not the center's fault. So that backs the Bobcats up five, their fourth penalty of the half. And the clock running with 30 seconds to play. In a 50 to 18 half, Skyview comfortably in the lead. Thatcher across the middle too high. His receiver is dumped out at the 47 yard line and he is slow to get up, but he does get up. Same can't be said for one of the Grizzlies. And one of those Grizzly defenders is still down. As the defender, two defenders were right on top of Ballard. One of them had him up on his shoulder and really put him on the ground hard. And the other receiver got, or the other defender was there too, and he may have gotten the worst of it. They're checking him out. I wonder if he got the wind knocked out of him. I think so, because now he's up. That was McAllister. So he'll have to be on the sideline for a play. Reed Olson's out there on defense now. I said earlier, hadn't seen him much tonight. He's out there playing defensive end, number six on that far side. He's in the stand up uh, in that nine position. Gonna come off that edge. Looking to run the screen. They run it to Egbert. Oh no, Egbert with blockers. Egbert with a sideline and a convoy. Let's see, touchdown. <laughs> 64 yards. On the little screen. And Egbert with his sixth touchdown of the night. The explosive plays have come fast and furious in this first half as Skyview is sitting with 56 points on the board and looking to make it 57. They don't, the PAT is blocked. Seven seconds to play in the first half. 56 to 18, Skyview cruising. Well, we've talked about some of our great sponsors like Wendy's of Logan. It's pumpkin spice time. They've got their pumpkin spice frosty cream cold brew. They've got their pumpkin spice frosty as well. It's your favorite dessert mixed with your favorite fall flavor, pumpkin spice. It's frosty. It's basically delicious. Wendy's of Logan, game of the week sponsor. Seven seconds to play in the first half. At one point, early in the second quarter, this game was 15 to 12, Skyview. A couple of missed PATs, the only difference in the, instead of it being a tie ball game. And since then, Skyview has uh, scored a lot more points than Logan has. On the return, Pingree. Tries to pop it outside. He goes down with two seconds left on the clock. See what the Logan offense does. They go out and just take a knee or if they try to take a shot. He's trailing 56 to 18. <laughs> 41 to six burst by Skyview since that 15 to 12 point earlier on. And 
Pond is out there. He's got two receivers to this near side. Red to the far side, and Skyview's playing their defensive backs deep. They're going to throw the little underneath screen to Red. There's a flag. Why wouldn't there be a flag? Because there have been 100 of them tonight. I think Skyview will decline whatever the penalty is. That's an ineligible man downfield. That's declined. That's the half. 56 to 18. Skyview goes to the locker room with a big lead over low. The whole game, I don't hear anybody in the crowd. It's just me and the pitcher out there. Sometimes I'll hear a coach off to the side, give a clap. Then I know that that runner is going to steal. So then I give the pitcher the sign. Baseball, that's just been my one constant through my life. It's harder to be a catcher than any other position. We have to be a lot more vocal, leaders of the team, and there's so much more time spent in the bullpen catching pitchers. It's always my fault if something happens. I feel 100% responsible. I always hear him say he wants to play competitive baseball as long as possible. Yeah. But ultimately, you go into the medical profession. I teach myself organic chemistry for fun just because I think it's fascinating. But I do a lot of backyard experiments. He teaches me chemistry. He's like, so my head is the nucleus, and these are the electrons, and they're moving around. Zoom Tech is the LLC that I created for biotech devices. I want to help prevent or test breast cancer in the future. Both of my sisters had breast cancer, and so when Karsten was a toddler, I decided to have preventative double mastectomies, and he was always by my side. It's just always made me want to raise awareness of breast cancer and help other women fight through it. Definitely something that I think about because I know that I'm a carrier for the gene and it could go through my family or to my sister. I don't like to admit it, but I brag about him a lot. Oh, there's my brother. He's bright, he's inventive, compassionate. I, I'm very sentimental. <laughs> Naturally, I think, want to be successful and just pursue things that I think are interesting and take it to the maximum level especially with like breast cancer, and I want to help as many people as I can. And I'm not going to let failures deter me. Over the period of time, my hearing became worse and worse. Over the course of the years, I developed a, a hearing loss, and I would not be able to hear my employees talk to me sometimes. For Paul Dings and Cash Valley's integrity, his character, his background, his equipment, I would recommend him to anyone for a hearing aid specialist. The Game of the Week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by Wendy's of Cache Valley. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology. Bring back what you have been missing. Aspen Dental. Get that gorgeous smile you've always wanted. Custom Fence Company. Privacy, security, peace of mind. Anderson Seed and Garden, growing better gardeners. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. KSM means music, music is all we do. Factory Pizzeria, we're open late after the game. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's TV station for over 30 years. And Crimson Fielder Colson along with you on the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. Logan trails Skyview at the Logan homecoming, 56 to 18. Skyview had 242 yards rushing, all of those yards by Brevin Egbert. He also had five touchdowns rushing. 
five rushing touchdowns, and he caught a screen pass for 64 yards and a touchdown. So over 300 yards of total offense for Egbert tonight. Thatcher was four of five, or excuse me, one, two, three, four, four of five of six for 124 yards and a touchdown. 366 total yards for Skyview. Logan, 22 yards on the ground, 224 in the air. They had some success throwing the ball, 246 total yards. Cooper Red, six catches, two touchdowns, 151 yards. Logan will kick off, start this second half. It should be a running clock. And they're gonna go onside kick, and they touched it too soon. It was a nice little dribbler, and the kicker ran up and it bounced right to him. And he touched it too soon. <laughs> Got to go. It's got to go 10 yards. So Skyview will start near midfield. Bear River leads Green Canyon 10-6 in that ball game. Okay, the ball's going to be at the 47-yard line of Logan. Skyview. Their starters are all still out there, and the clock is going to be a running clock here in this second half. Hand it to Egbert. Egbert's got running room again. This time they get a hold of him before he reaches his 24 yards per carry average. That time he only gets seven yards. Got to do better, Brevin. Just kidding, my gosh. Six touchdowns, 300-plus all-purpose yards. I don't know if there is a better. 11 carries, 249 yards, and five touchdowns on the ground for Eckert. That's He's at 21 rushing touchdowns for the season. They fake the give to Eckert, and they hand to a different running back. Terman. Herman picks up three. This is the first third down for Skyview, according to my stats. Again, they're pretty unofficial, but this is the first third down of the night. Herman, the running back, turn and hand it to him. Herman's in the clear. Herman cuts it back inside. He's inside the 20, making my miss inside the five. Down to about the four yard line. Thirty four yards for Herman. My goodness, first and goal at the three yard line in the running game. Skyview has been able to do whatever they want. They're almost to 300 yards rushing. There's still 10 minutes to play in the third quarter. Skyview has not punted the ball tonight. They've scored on every possession. New quarterback in there, I think it's Favero. And he's in, touchdown. Skyview's going to be getting some work for some of their backups tonight as they're now over 60 points. Snap, spot, kick, good. 63 to 18. Skyview leads Logan. You're watching the game of the week on the Valley Channel. Well, it's that time in the game when your friendly neighborhood play-by-play -play guy starts getting a little bit hungry. 
Wondering what he might uh, stop and grab on the way home, right? Well, I think I might try Wendy's. They've got their new loaded nacho cheeseburger. Sounds like a game changer to me when it comes to burgers. It's got cheese, beef, queso, and tortilla strips. So cheesy that it works. Choose wisely, choose Wendy's. They're loaded nacho cheeseburger. Wendy's, the game of the week sponsor. Sixty-three to eighteen. Logan on the wrong side of that score, and they'll return it out to the thirty-one yard line, and that's where Keaton Pond and the Logan offense will take over. Well, they've continued to punch in this game as Logan. They trying to go toe to toe with the heavyweight, and they keep punching, but. You know, Skyview's just had too much, but Logan has, they haven't given up. We'll give them that. They have uh, put together some nice drives. They've put the ball in the end zone three times. And now they're probably going to be playing against some backups. But Skyview playing tonight like they remember that Logan spoiled their homecoming last year. Velo for a yard. Again, if you're just joining us, this ball game in the second quarter, it was 15 to 12, Skyview. There's sack number eight, and ball's free. It bounces right back to Pawn. And they lose big yards. 18-yard loss for Pond. And sack number eight. Protection's been an issue tonight. Pond has been running away from pressure most of the evening. Still managed to pass for 242 yards. He throws a beautiful ball, and you just wonder if, you know, if they maybe protect a little bit more if he would, uh, what kind of numbers he might be able to put up. He's got some decent receivers, but Skyview's pass rush has been relentless. They run the screen. Pick up about seven or eight for Avila. Avila, two catches, 12 yards. Is Logan going to punt on fourth down? 7.15 to play in the third quarter. Yeah, they're going to punt it away down here. Logan on the evening is 4 of 12 on third downs. That kick may have touched one of the Bobcats. It may have touched the foot of one of the Bobcats. The official said, yes, it did. And the first turnover of the night. Oh, the other official on the side comes in and says no. So one official said it's Skyview ball. The other official on the side comes in and says no. It's Logan football, and now they're discussing it. The official on this near sideline came walk in. The back judge... The back judge came up and said it was Skyview ball. The official in this near sideline, who had a better look at it, came out there and said to him, no, here's what happened. That back judge listened. They talked about it. And it's Logan football, a turnover for Skyview. And as officials, you know, people give officials grief, but a lot of it's about angles. You see that in basketball especially, but... We can see things from up here. These guys are down there with bodies in between them. And that sideline official had a better look. Downfield, Red's got a step. <laughs> 38 yards. Red approaching 200 yards receiving. 
They're looking for Argyle on the jump ball, and he had to play defender and reach up and bat it down so it wasn't intercepted. It was actually a good job by Argyle to keep it from getting picked. And they're stopping the clock after the play. They're not supposed to. Yeah, there they started it again. The official looked up at the booth and motioned to start the clock. When it's a 35-plus point lead, that's when they do the running clock. Pond, oh my gosh, in trouble. You could almost hear him saying it from up here. Looking up and saying, eesh. Pond loses five. And that's another sack. That's sack number nine for this Skyview defense. Coming into this game tonight, Skyview had 16 sacks on the season. Going for Argyle again. He's being held in the end zone. And there's the flag. I'm gonna check that number on the sacks again for Skyview. Vickers and Palmer had two each. And they had 16 sacks on the season. They got nine tonight. So that's going to be half the distance to the goal penalty against Skyview. It's still third down because on... His pass interference, they take the yardage. And remember, it was third and long. Pond in trouble again, down he goes again. There's sack number 10. He lost three. Well, obviously you go for it here if you're Logan. They've looked exclusively to the left side of the field. All three plays. Pond has been looking to the left side. And the left side is the boundary side. See if they go field side here or maybe somebody breaking toward the middle because the safety's coming. And they whistle the play dead. Logan wants a timeout. Safety was coming. Everything was running to the outsides. Didn't look like they had anybody that was gonna run a middle pattern, which would have been wide open. 4.20 to play in the third quarter. Fast moving third after a first half that took a while to play because of all the scoring. This clock stops every time, every time there's a score. Every time there's a score, the clock stops. Just like an every time you hear a bell ring, an angel gets its wings. Saw some snow on the mountains, so I'm thinking about Christmas already. Told somebody today how much I enjoyed seeing that. I thought I was gonna get hurt. After that long winter last year, it seemed like a short summer. It's been a long night for the Grizzlies. And they're still trying to they're still working on their stuff, trying to put one in the end zone here. Here comes a blitz. Pond's got running room. He's gonna look over for the pylon. It's a race. He's pushed out of bounds, short of the first down. And he knew it too. He needed 10, I think he got nine. So they come up short. Do the Grizzlies. And they turn it over on downs. Skyview takes over. At their own four yard line. He was close, Pond was close. But he knew it when he went out of bounds. He got shoved out of bounds. He needed about one more step. So pretty good job of closing by the Skyview defense. And now I think we're pretty much going to see the Skyview JV out here with 3.35 to play 
in the ball game and the clock running. It's 63 to 18. Skyview leading Logan. Tomorrow night, a big game up in Maverick Stadium. James Madison University and Utah State. James Madison is good. So I hope you're not one of those people thinking, oh, there's another Idaho State coming in. No, they're not. They are good. So I hope folks show up for that game. And Utah State will be will need, need that help from the crowd. Ball out to the 20. Pass is complete for 15 yards. And the Bobcats move the chains. see who the quarterback is now for Skyview. Can't tell if it's Phillips or Karen. 16 or 18. Second down and seven. Give it off. Pick up three more, under two minutes to play in the third. I think that's Phillips at quarterback, 16. Karen's playing receiver on this near side. Now he's going to run off. And it's third down and three. Skyview, one of one on third downs tonight. Pass rush coming. Unloading downfield. Ball is incomplete. And the clock should keep running. But they've stopped it. And it's fourth down. Now they run it again. I guess they have to wait for the white hat to give them the signal. First punt of the night for Skyview. Cooper Red is back. They need one more guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's only ten guys out there for Logan. That's not a penalty, but you know, you're down, you're short a guy. Red asking for the fair catch. He's got it. And Logan takes over at the 40. With 38 ticks on the third quarter clock. Logan will be able to run at least one more play here before the end of the third quarter. Pond is the quarterback. Pond, rusher right in his lap. It's gonna go down again, sack number 11. 14 yard loss. And that's gonna be the last play of the third quarter. Logan and Skyview. The longest running rivalry in Cash Valley. It's been all Bobcats tonight, 63 to 18. You're watching the game of the week on the Valley Channel. Hey, today's hearing aid technology can really improve, well, not only your life, but the lives of the people who care about you. Have you ever been maybe in a party situation, a lot of other voices around, and you're just having a hard time picking things out, you're not, you know, and you're wondering, man, maybe I should see somebody. Well, go to 
go to Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology and go and see Dr. Paul Danes. And once again, be able to understand what everybody's having such a good time laughing about and what they're talking about. Dr. Danes is going to customize a hearing improvement program to meet your requirements, whatever they are. Call them for an appointment. Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology, a Game of the Week sponsor. Got a new quarterback out there for Logan now. Pond is taking a beating. And they're going to bring him to the sideline. Let me see if they can live to fight another day. Let's see if he comes back on, because he came off slow, and he's got a trainer with him. They bring him back over. Pawns over there doing hand signals, calling plays. It'll be interesting to see if they put him back in. It looks like Peyton Rudd, number 16, might be in there at quarterback. Rudd in trouble. Sack number 12. <laughs> No, no, it's Favero. It's Easton Favero. Ah, that can't be right either. Let's see. Yeah, it can be right. We don't have we don't have that number on the roster. It's Peyton. Red is listed as 16 on the roster that I have. Doesn't matter now as Skyview's offense will be back out on the field, leading 63 to 18 in a running clock situation here at homecoming with Logan. So the game's not going to turn out how the Grizzlies want, but. Maybe everybody will have fun at the dance. <laughs> Cooper Red for Logan. Close to 200 yards receiving. That's been a bright spot for the Grizzlies. He's got a couple of touchdowns. And he was, all, he was also named the homecoming king. Grizzlies have a bunch of youngsters in the ballgame now as well. Red's still out there as a safety. Quarterback's going to keep it on a design quarterback run. He gets around the corner, steps out of bounds. Picks up a first down. Stepped out of bounds, stops the clock until they set the ball, and now they start it up again. Skyview led 56-18 at the half. They've scored a touchdown here on their first possession of the second half. Nice defensive play to catch the runner on that end around for a loss. play by Argyle. Second and 14. Oh, 
give on the little run on second and 14 for Skyview. Pretty nifty little run. Pick up of eight. And now it's third down for Skyview. The Skyview team that's only punted once tonight. Scored on all, all but one possession. And that was their last possession. And they've got their JV out there, basically. Flag at the 40. Big hit on the running back. And it's going to be fourth down and three. Let's see what the flag is. Holding on Skyview. See if Logan declines it on fourth down. Ball's at the 40. Uh, Skyview's got some younger guys in there. They might just go for it. Play some situational football here. It's almost like a practice now, right? For, you're up big. Now you can just start kind of working on some things with some of your younger guys. And they're going to on fourth down and four. Timeout called by Skyview. 7-18 to play in the ball game. Skyview leading 63-18. to Last score we had out of that Bear River Green Canyon game, it was Bear River was leading that one 10 to 6. Let's see if we can pull an update on that one. Well, let's see. Oh, Green Canyon leading Bear River now 20 to 10. Skyview's ranked third in the Deseret News Bowl. Number 19 over all classifications. Crimson Cliffs is ranked ahead of them at number two. Crimson Cliffs beating Stansbury tonight 35-20. That one's still going on. Park City's ranked number one. Skyview decides to punt it. This one's going to die and roll back to about the 12-yard line before it's finally down. Park City beating, leading Cottonwood 28-7. And if you take a look at the RPI, you got it right here in the top five of the RPI. Well, the top two are right here in Cache Valley. Skyview number one, Ridgeline number two. Then it's Crimson Cliffs at three, Park City at four, Provo at five, and Green Canyon. At six, Mount Crisp checks in at seven. Bear River at 13, Logan at 20. Playoff brackets are out. There's still a couple weeks left, so things can change, but we'll take a look after this play. What might, if things were to start today, Skyview would get a bye. Ridgeline would get a bye. And it's, it's the top few teams that get a bye. Mountain Crest would be playing at home against Tooele. Logan would be traveling to Bear River to play them. Skyview, Ridgeline, and Green Canyon, I believe. No, Green Canyon, yeah, they would get a bye as well. Skyview, Ridgeline, Green Canyon would all get a bye. Mountain Crest would be playing at home against Tooele in that first week. Look out, this one up in the air, just about picked off off the hands of the defensive back. That was gonna be six if he came down with it. But there's 26 teams in 4A now. Skyby would end up playing the Winner of the 16-17 game. Ball carrier driven backwards. It's fourth down again. Right now, that 16-17 spot, that's Payson and Spanish Fork. 
Ridge line would get the Ridge line would get the uh, winner of the 15-18 game. Is Dixie and Pineview? Again, there's a game next week, and then a game uh, the week after that. We won't be doing a game the last week of the season. Because all of the Valley teams will be out of the Valley. 440 to play in the ball game. And Logan wants a timeout. Well, Coach Munn telling me before the game, really getting out of this rut here in region play comes down to fundamentals. He said we're coaching the fundamentals, and now they have to they have to exhibit the fundamentals. The talking to him was interesting because he was he was really upbeat, right? He was very. I mean, what do you expect him to say? The last, this has been a tough three-game stretch, but. You know, he didn't really make excuses. He listed out, hey, here's some of the reasons why we're, you know, things have been a little tough. These are some of the things we can do something about. You can't do anything about injuries. You know, but you can do something about playing your fundamentals better, about working on your protections a little bit better. He did. He was really upbeat. In his first year here, he knows it's a process. And, that it'll, it'll take a little bit of time, but. It was, a, it was an impressive conversation. He said, you know, we've, we've got to learn how to move on to the next play and not let things spiral on us. And then he quoted Ted Lasso about being a goldfish. Be like a goldfish. Goldfish has a attention span of, or a memory of, you know, some infinite, teeny tiny number. and. So we got to be like goldfish. Just forget the play and move on to the next one. Gain of a yard on the run. Second and nine. Look out, another runner in space. Logan looking to make a tackle and keep him out of the end zone. They spin him out of bounds after a big game. Now they're doubling up on their numbers. That was 24, which it wasn't 24. Phillips, uh, Guthrie is 24. Maybe been 26, and they don't have him on the roster. Oh, Phillips, yes they do. He's 16 or 26. There he carries again. He's down near the 10. And the clock moving toward two and a half minutes left in the game. Second down at the 11-yard line, 63 to 18. Skyview running away with this one. Both teams deep into their bench. 2-10 to play in the ball game. Second down. Looking for the end zone. Not quite there. Down to the one. So Phillips is either the quarterback, is he 16 or 26, right? They've got 16 slash 26 as Phillips, but they had a running back in there a minute ago that was 26, and 16's the quarterback. So mom of the quarterback and this running back at home. Sorry. 
going to keep it up the middle. Skyview looking to put 70 on the board. Touchdown. With 1.34 to play in the ball game, Skyview's JV runs it down the field and puts it in the end zone. Now the only thing Skyview's done wrong tonight is they've had a couple of PATs blocked. There's another one that's blocked right up the middle. <laughs> one twelve to play in the ball game. 69 to 18, Skyview. talked all night about all of our great sponsors from the game of the week on the Valley Channel. I've mentioned Wendy's a couple of times. It's worth mentioning them one more time. Did you know they do a delivery? Whether you're hungry for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, there's more than one way to get Wendy's delivered. You can start your delivery order straight from the Wendy's app, or you can head to any other official third-party uh, third partners like DoorDash, Grubhub, Postmates, or Uber Eats so you can get your Wendy's favorites from your favorite delivery app anytime you want it with Wendy's Delivery. Wendy's, a Game of the Week sponsor. Sixty-nine, eighteen, Skyview. 112 left to play in the ball game. Boots it away, taken at the 14 yard line. Out to about the 25. <laughs> Logan will be back out on the field for probably the last possession of the game. As it's all over with the crying here at Crimson Field. Logan will go back and regroup and try to take what they can from this one and move forward. But it doesn't get any easier. Next week, they've got Ridgeline. And then they're at Green Canyon to close out region play. Skyview's got Green Canyon coming up. And then they end the season at Mountain Crest. We'll have that Mountain Crest game for you. They're going deep are the Grizzlies. Flag comes in with 27 seconds to play. It's going to be 15 yards, and the Grizzlies will get another chance to go up top. That Mountain Crest Skyview game could be interesting because this is a big rivalry here, but that Mountain Crest Skyview, that's that's a rivalry game as well. It goes back a ways. Mountain Crest won their first championship by beating Skyview. And there's been a lot of great ball games between those two teams in the past. Mountain Crest has taken their lumps the last few years from Skyview and would like to maybe return a favor. They've got a good defense this year and a, an offense that can that can put some points up on the board. Logan's going to take a timeout with four seconds left. See if they can get another score up there. They put 18 on the board. They've missed three PATs, or it'd be 21. Skyview's had some PATs blocked. They were successful on one two-point PAT attempt. Skyview would have 70 if it wasn't for the blocks. Six rushing touchdowns for Skyview. Two through the air. And a pick six returned by Vickers for a touchdown. That was part of that 41 to six run that Skyview went on to break open a 15 to 12 ball game. Early in the second quarter, it was 15 to 12. Logan had been moving the ball well. They missed a couple of PATs. Skyview and 
hit their PATs and hit on a two-point conversion. Plus the three-point span there, and then Skyview just went on this 41 to six run to blow the game open. And they've scored twice here in the second half. Pond's gonna come in, and looks like Logan's just gonna take a knee and get this game over with. And he does. And that's it from Logan, 69-18. Skyview stays undefeated, 7-0, 3-0 in region play. Logan drops to 2-5 and 0-3 in the region. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on the Game of the Week. The Game of the Week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by... Wendy's of Cache Valley, it's way better than fast food, it's Wendy's. Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology, bring back what you have been missing. Aspen Dental, get that gorgeous smile you've always wanted. Custom Fence Company, privacy, security, peace of mind. Anderson Seed and Garden, growing better gardeners. The Logo Shop. We logo stuff. All kinds of stuff. KSM means music. Music is all we do. Factory Pizzeria. We're open late after the game. And the Valley Channel. Cash Valley's TV station for over 30 years. At Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology, we believe in a very thorough hearing test. Do you hear ringing noises? Does any member of your family have hearing loss? Do you have frequent or severe headaches? Any numbness in your face or fingertips? Do loud sounds hurt your ears? Were you in the military? Have you ever had your hearing tested before? No, I have not. Say the word mousetrap. Say the word baseball. Say the word airplane. Say the word cowboy. It also told us if you had a hunt, I was able to make the words in the rest of the What are all the rest of the... Okay. Bring back what you've been missing. Bring back Cash Valley hearing and audiology. Danes, I suppose one of the main drawbacks um, that people consider, maybe not to you, but when people are thinking about getting a hearing aid, is how we're going to run the darn thing. Do we use batteries, rechargeable, you know, what are the options? Hearing aids run off batteries. There has to be something that powers the, the hearing aid. And so typically we use hearing aid batteries and they last anywhere from the smallest size about three days up to about a week and a half or so. And uh, so you're always constantly replacing the batteries. Yeah. But, uh, but having said that, some people, that's the route that they want to go, right? They love that's not a problem for them. And they, so then we've got the rechargeable ones nowadays. The rechargeables have been around for a little while, oh, maybe seven or eight years, but they haven't worked very well. They've used a silver oxide battery, and that was a little bit better, but it still gives you about six hours of use, and then they go dead. So now they're all switching over to lithium ion batteries that will give you a full day's 24 hours worth of use, and uh, you can connect to your phone, stream TV, all of that, and it still gives you power to get through the whole day. 
and th that's what these little things are here. You pop them in. Charger and two couple different charging cases. Yeah. They have a smaller one and one that has a few more functions. It's yeah. a little bit bigger. But. Okay. but we were talking earlier about this. It's almost here. Almost here. There's a new option for you guys out there that this sounds, it almost sounds like science fiction, doesn't it? It's wonderful. Yep, and we're going to be able to start ordering these in the next month or so. Uh, it's a fuel cell hearing aid. So what it does, it uses a, a methane charge that you put into the hearing aid, and it charges it up in 20 seconds, and it will give you 24 hours of use. Wow, if only my phone would work on something like that. <laughs> no batteries, uh, so it's environmentally friendly. We all want to inter uh, reduce our, our footprint. And, right. and So there's no batteries to replace. All you do is plug that in and charge it up with the, the gas and it runs off the, the gas and when it give you full 24 hours of use. I, I don't, wow, that's about all we can say. Is it a little canister that the gas is in? Yep. I, I actually haven't right seen it yet, yeah. so uh, I assume that's what it is. I've kind of seen a little bit of a pro promotion of it and yeah. it's just a small little thing that you plug in and 20 seconds later you're ready to go. 20 seconds, I don't even know what to say to that. That is amazing technology. This is a little bit of water vapor and that's about it. Wow, so those of you that want to go green and don't want to keep throwing the batteries away or recharging, this is going to be a fabulous new option. And you're probably one of the first people here in the valley, at least, to, to get this technology. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not out yet, but it's coming. So when it's, it's available, we'll be one of the first ones to have it. Yeah. So if you want to go that route, uh, come on down here and... and because we all want to get back everything that we've lost in our hearing. And to be able to, I mean, you could just carry this anywhere. You could, if you went camping, you're out in the middle of nowhere, you just throw the little bit of gas into the, the hearing aid and you're good to go for another. It's compressed air. Right. Yep. Hydrogen. Wow, it's amazing technology. If this is something that you'd be interested in, it's going to be here any day now. Yep. Come on down to Cache Valley Hearing and talk to Dr. Danes. Tell us where we are, Dr. Danes. We're at 485 North Main Street in Logan. Yeah. And what's your telephone number? 753-4327. Uh, if you want to stop by or make an appointment, this is brilliant new technology uh, that's available to, or going to be available here to us uh, in the valley any day now. Thanks, Dr. Danes. You bet. Thank you. Bring back what you've been missing. Bring back Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology. someone comes in and they're really experiencing a lot of pain and you look at them and you diagnose that they need a root canal which we hear those oh yes I've had to have a root canal but what does that actually mean what is a root canal well I, that's a good question a lot of people have that question I think uh, to understand a root canal you kind of have to understand the anatomy of a tooth um, a tooth has in its center is living tissue the tooth is very much alive so there's nerves there's blood vessels and in the chamber of the tooth and down each root is a canal so that's where we get a root canal um, and in that canal is where the tissue lives and, and a root canal is simply the removal of that tissue so we create a hole in the center of the tooth the top of the tooth um, and remove that tissue we use files to go down each root and clean that out we sterilize the tooth so that there's no more bacteria in there because a lot of times the tooth was infected okay. um, and then we seal it off with a sealer material that allows us to maintain that tooth. Okay. So now you said maintain the, t uh, the tooth which is actually why we're going to all this trouble because the easiest route would be let's just yank that thing out. Why is it so important to keep our own teeth? Well yeah I think in some people's perspective yanking the tooth would be easier right. but um, it's always more challenging and it's more expensive in the long run to tr try and replace a tooth that's now missing. Okay. Um, so if we can maintain that tooth and if we can do that for as long as possible that's really I ideal. Our tooth, nothing is going to be, we can't replace the tooth that God gave you. I mean right. uh, there's just qu not quite a replacement for it yet. Mm -hmm. we, yeah, there's good attempts and we're right. doing a lot better with implants and things like that. Mm -hmm. But if we can maintain that tooth, really your function, your uh, everything is just better if we can maintain that for as long as we can. Now going back many years, I can only imagine, well I suppose in the old days they would just have pulled everything. 
And even nowadays, the thought of having a root canal is going to put some people right off because it, it sounds awful. It sounds painful. Not so. You know, I think the, the misconception of a painful root canal maybe started back then, um, but really when someone has a toothache, that consumes them. They can't yeah. sleep. Um, and so what do they do? They come in and they get a root canal. And I think in their memory, that's what they associate, the root canal with the toothache. Right. But not really. It's, it's, sim it's a pretty simple procedure. We numb you up like we would do a filling. It may take a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, it's kind of an intricate, uh, a lengthy procedure. Um, but really, it should be, for the most part, pain-free. Okay. Very rarely do we have a tooth that we have a hard time getting numb that is just not pain-free when we do a root canal. So um, I think that's a little bit of a misconception. It and, is, yeah. and well, Maybe with all dentistry, I hate to say it, but, you know, people think, oh, it's going to hurt or it's going to be uncomfortable. Not these days. No, it's not too bad. No. And, and I think it's kind of guilty by association of the toothache. Yeah. Really, the root canal is what gets you out of the pain, so eventually. Yeah. Puts an end to it. So tell us uh, who we need to call if we're having this. And it is an all-consuming pain, isn't it, when you have it. So actually, to me, it wouldn't matter what happened as the end result because you're getting rid of the pain. Where do we need to call? Uh, you can give us a call at 753-4400, it's Aspen Dental. Come in and see them if you're having that ghastly pain, they will sort you out. Thanks Dr. Wapping.